a sampling of recent election fraud cases from across the United States. This is the Heritage Foundation's election fraud database. And this is just a sample of all of the stuff that's gone on. 1,499 proven instances of voter fraud, 1,275 criminal convictions, 56 civil penalties, uh, diversion program. What is a diversion program? That's probably when you're guilty and they give you some other bullshit. That That's possible. I should have looked into what a diversion program is there. My bad. 26 judicial findings and 22 official findings. Look, 1,499 cases of election fraud. Let's break out the calculating device really fast here. Because... <laughs> uh, we're trying to figure out the convictions to the uh, proven instances of voter fraud, or fifty. That's thirty cases of election fraud per state. That's pretty significant. That is and, a significant amount, and that doesn't even talk about the ones that were ignored because we had the big one in Muskegon. Mine was ignored. Yeah, and it was right there in front of you. You could see that I had voted from an address that I hadn't been at in years. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna go I'm gonna go pull mine and find out what the hell they're talking about. Yeah. This is what they were able to find. This doesn't count all of the ones that were ignored, swept under the rug, or blatantly just burned away. Um just the sheer amount of pick a random state. Hey Jimmy Bones, pick a state. Uh you know, you know what? my state. We'll go with uh, Nebraska. Nab Nebraska. Where is Nebraska? Right there. Uh, right in the middle. I thought so. There we go. Look at that. I got it right on the first try. Uh, 2023. How about that? Larry Divis, ineligible voting. What? You're in Nebraska, right? Yep. Why is Ali Abdullahi voting in Nebraska? Yeah. Uh, he's probably the. I, I couldn't tell you. Probably Ali. some. Shuib Ali. He wow. probably probably owns a gas station or a couple motels. Do you guys <laughs> have the Pajit thing there in Nebraska? Uh, there was actually one. There's a couple of them in my area, actually. And uh, one of them actually got locked up for bootlegging and tax evasion. Hmm. I, they like to do that. We're heavily infested with them. I was very surprised to see these in Nebraska. Nebraska. Though. That. That baffled me. Mm. Yeah. Let's see here. A pleaded no contest to voting twice in the 2016 general election. Voted early in October and turned up at the polls again in November to cast another ballot. He was fined $100. Hey, Ali Abdullahi, how about we deport you? That would be nice. That would be nice, yeah. Larry Divis, 2023, was charged by the state in Colfax County with one felony coat of election uh, felony count of election falsification. Divis was a resident of Columbus, but falsely claimed he resided in Richland, where he registered and voted in the 2020 general election. There was a woman in Ohio. Do you remember this? She voted like five or six times. Yeah. And then they had her on TV bragging about how she had voted five or six times, and she was proud of herself that she had voted five or six times. And did they, do, they didn't do anything to her? Mm -mm. No. Nope. I think they gave her a $100 fine per instance or something like that. Yeah, that's ridiculous. We need to start taking this shit serious because this is going to wind up, you know, turning into something really bad. This is not being taken seriously because of the problems I mentioned before. We made our Secretary of State flinch by showing up and actually doing something about it. There's a meeting that I was going to attend tonight in Shelby, uh, but I'm here doing this show instead because it is, it, this is more important to me. Because I know other people will be attending that meeting, and tomorrow morning I can make my phone call, talk to those people, and, and get, get the all notes. the information that I needed. Yeah. But now, this is our fucking country, gentlemen. Yeah. This is serious fucking business. All right. Just think about that. This country has been around for over 200 years. It started off as an experiment in freedom. And over the past 50 years, we've watched it literally be chipped away killed by a thousand paper cuts and i believe the final blows is going to come here in 2024 or shortly thereafter and i i hope that we can pull back from this craziness 
but if it gets bad, I mean, China had the, the what the the red uh, red uprising in seventy nine to eighty one. Oh, the real brutal one was nineteen fifty three. No, no, I'm talking about the most recent one where they had fifteen million people die. Oh yeah, yeah, that was that was just a minor speed bump over there in China. Yeah. All right, now. 15 million people who die in this country, some shit like that. That's a serious fucking event. That's 5% or 6% of the gross population. That is a serious thing. All right. And uh, we need to take it serious. So pay attention. Yeah, it is. This is uh, basically if we don't start doing some of this stuff, if we don't start pushing back, your vote doesn't count for anything. This is how you make your vote count. The organization, the, the meeting that is actually about halfway over now in Shelby, uh, actually it's wrapping up in Shelby, is how to organize and how to put your county together into grand juries because guess what? It turns out there's a law where the American people in counties with the county commission can put together a grand jury and you can hold people in your county accountable and try them right there. Oh yeah. That sounds awesome. With, with the public, with we, the people, that whole thing where we're the government. Yes. This is how you do it. So I'm going to get that information tomorrow morning. We'll add that to one of our shows as well, because you can fight back. We, well, we can call the, it election insurrection. There you go. The, but we're not doing anything illegal. It's the all in the book. Has already happened. Yeah, you're watching the insurrection. Yes, right now you're watching the insurgency. Correct. Okay. So all of this stuff with these elections, the way that they're doing this to shut us down, it's no coincidence that. And those of you who are older, uh, you need to be at least in the fifty-five bracket. To have taken civics in junior high school and in high school. I would say 50 to 52. They okay. shut civics down when I was a sophomore, which was 85. Huh. I don't remember that. Okay. But that's where you learned. About your government. About our government oh, and right. how we, the people, are supposed to be the ones in charge. The language has been changed. Now you have politicians. Now you have leaders. They used to be called representatives. They also used to have another name that nobody uses anymore. Which is? See? You don't know. I don't know. Public servant. Ah. Yep. Do you remember the term public servant? Well, everyone who works for the government elected or installed is technically a public, a public servant. What does that make you? That makes you, uh, you're accountable to the people because you are their servant. You are not their leader. It makes you, Mr. Elected Official, Mr. Bureaucrat working at the freaking whatever, the driver's license bureau, whatever that, you are a public servant, right? You're the hired fucking help. You know what you do to somebody who is the hired help when you catch them with their fucking hand in the cookie jar, when you catch them stealing, when you catch them freaking cutting deals for their buddies? Do you know what you do with that person? You fire them. And if the crime is egregious enough, you put them in jail. And if the crime is particularly egregious enough, there's a tree. I Ex got a rope. Extreme chiropractic. Yeah. I remember when we used to tar and feather those kind of people. I'm for that. I am for bringing tarring and feathering back. The important part of my little freaking off the rail rant there is this start calling these people what they are stop calling them what they want you to call them whatever they call themselves on tv that's not what they are they're public servants they are the hired help we need to start treating them like the hired help yep if you're a guy who has a house with enough money that you've got a butler he's the hired help you catch him Stealing the family silver. Gone. Gone. And doing jail time. These people are that. That's what they are to this. But they've they are... been getting away with it for so long. They're now they're now blatant about it. They're they're it's not covert, it's overt now. It's overt, yep. exactly. Which is why it's so important that we start calling these public servants out on this. <laughs>
Watch Grunt Speak live every Tuesday and Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern. And if you want to join Pop for support or Sundays, go to redonculus.com slash donate and make a monthly pledge. A link is in the Meat Gazer box.